Carpathia Rusin Day, October 26. It was on October 26, 1918. The representatives of 21 stateless peoples gathered in historic Independence Hall in Philadelphia and signed a Declaration of Common Aims. This was the first time in modern history that Carpathia Rusins were recognized as a distinct nationality by neighboring peoples and by the United States government. During and after World War I, many nationalities wanted the right to govern themselves. In September 1918, a group organized by Tomas Masaryk, a Czechoslovak activist, met in New York City and organized the Mid-European Union. The Mid-European Union. The Mid-European Union called for the dissolution of the Habsburg monarchy and the political reconstruction of the area on the principle of national self-determination. They agreed to work for the common freedom and proposed an affirmation of loyal and brotherly cooperation. Arrangements were made to have a meeting of the union at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. The Mid-European Union. The Mid-European Union called for the dissolution of the Habsburg monarchy and the political reconstruction of the area on the principle of national self-determination. They agreed to work for the common freedom and proposed an affirmation of loyal and brotherly cooperation. Arrangements were made to have a meeting of the union at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Carpathia Russian Americans moved toward independence in the homeland. July 1918. Carpathia Russian Americans convened in Homestead, Pennsylvania and called for complete independence of Carpathian Ruthenia. The immigrant Rusin leaders knew they needed a qualified U.S. leader, so they drafted Gregory Zhatkovich, who was an American-educated lawyer, to lead the effort. Between July and October, Zhatkovich negotiated with other ethnic groups and the U.S. government. He met with President Wilson, who urged him to meet with Masaryk. On October 23, 1918, the American National Council of Rusins, Amerikanska Narodna Rad Rusinio, was formed and Shatkovich took on the chairmanship. Declaration of Common Aims, October 26, 1918. Independence Hall, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Masaryk read out a Declaration of Common Aims of the newly created Mid-European Union. Those represented included Czechoslovaks, Poles, Yugoslavs, Ukrainians, Uhrorusins, Lithuanians, Romanians, and Italian irredentists, unredeemed Greeks, Albanians, Zionists, and Armenians, altogether 21 stateless peoples. The Reverend Emil Nowitzki, Gregory Zhatkovich, and Monsignor Theophil Zhatkovich before a replica of America's Liberty Bell made for the Mid-European Union meeting in Philadelphia, October 1918. The bell was sent the following year as a memorial to Ushrod, the capital of Subcarpathian Rus. Carpathian Rusin representation. During the signing, a large-scale map was displayed showing the proposed new states of Europe, on which the homeland of Carpathia Rusins was clearly depicted by the name Rusinia. Signing the Declaration of Common Names for the Carpathia Rusins was Gregory Zhatkovich. The fifth signature on the declaration is that of Gregory Zhatkovich. Carpathia Rusin Americans vote for union. November 12, 1918 in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at the urging of Masaryk, a plebiscite was held amongst Carpathia Rusin Americans in the Greek Catholic parishes. Those who voted for union with Czechoslovakia were 67%, Ukraine, 28%, Hungary, Russia, or Galicia, less than 1% each, and for full independence, 2%.
Events in the Homeland. November 8, 1918, the first of many national councils convened, stating the desire of its members to separate from Hungary, but did not specify an alternative other than it must involve the right to self-determination. On November 9, 1918, the council was held in Ushorod. This council declared itself the representative of the Carpathian people and began negotiations with Hungary. The Carpathian Rusin's final fate. April 1919, a special delegation of the Ushorod National Council met with the Czechoslovak government and asked them for the Czech troops to occupy the territory of Ruthenia. The Czech troops, under the auspices of the French, entered Ushorod and occupied the territory to the north. The south remained under Hungarian administration. In May 1919, then Central National Rusin Council at Ushorod unanimously voted for a union of the Rusins with Czechoslovakia on a federation basis. September of 1919, the St. Germain and Ley Treaty was signed. Under the terms of this treaty, the Ruthenian territory south of the Carpathians was designated as an autonomous unit with self-government compatible with the unity of the Czechoslovak state. The New Czechoslovakia. The first governor of Subcarpathian Ruthenia. April 26, 1920. Gregory Zatkovich was appointed by Czechoslovak President Masaryk as the first governor of Subcarpathian Ruthenia. He agreed to become the first governor provided he could retain his American citizenship. This was approved by President Woodrow Wilson and passed by the U.S. Congress. Gregory Zatkovich was born in Holobina, a village about 15 miles outside of Ushorod. He was five years old when the family immigrated to the United States. Zatkovich graduated from high school in Pittsburgh, earned his undergraduate degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1907, and his law degree from the Law School of Penn in 1910. Gregory Zatkovich's father, Paul, was born in 1852 in Ushorod. He became a notary public in Holobine and an editor of a Rusin publication. He migrated to the United States in 1891, where he became one of the leaders of the Carpathian Rusin people in the United States. He was one of the founders of the Greek Catholic Union, a fraternal insurance organization. He was also the founding editor of the leading Russian American newspaper, Amerikanski Ruska Vyesnik. Life in Ushorod. After being appointed governor, Gregory Zatkovich moved to Ushorod with his wife and two young children, Gregory, born in 1916, and Joan in 1918. Before they could settle in the governor's residence in Ushorod, which needed repairs, they stayed on the grounds of a 13th century fort in a seminary later built on the premises. The governor's residence in Ushorod. His wife, Leona, took on the duties of a governor's wife. The children learned the Rusin language. With the children, Leona visited the surrounding areas, met with the Rusin people in the villages and brought baskets of food to distribute. The family felt a deep concern for the very poor and were determined to help them. Life in Ushorod. In 1921, Leona and daughter came down with scarlet fever. Joan died and was buried in Calvary Cemetery in Ushorod. In one of Leona's letters to her sister, she wrote, when my little girl died, the closest friends could not have been more kind than these people, peasants and others. They came from almost all over Ruthenia and each brought a flower to lay on Joan's casket. I wanted to bring her home, but the people begged me to let her remain there as a link between them and us. Promise of Autonomy. 
The Czechoslovak government and President Masaryk did not follow through on the provisions of the Treaty of St. Germain and Ley, especially creating an autonomous state, providing representation in parliament, and upholding Rusyn customs and culture. In 1921, the Czech government had not complied with Zhatkovich's requests and resigned as governor and returned to the United States. He continued to fight through the U.S. State Department and the Czech government. Back in the United States. After returning to the United States, the Zhatkovichs had five more children, Paul, Betty, Connie, Ted, and Ivan. Gregory Zhatkovich returned to his law practice. He died in 1967, still fighting the Rusin cause. His children, Connie Zhatkovich Ash and Ted Zhatkovich, continue to tell his story. October 1992. In 1992, Connie Zhatkovich Ash and Ted Zhatkovich, children of Gregory Zhatkovich, were invited to Prague to accept the Tomas G. Masaryk Award for Distinguished Service to Building Democracy and Protecting Human Rights, awarded posthumously to their father. After the ceremony, they visited Ushrod. No one in the family had visited Ushrod since their father had been governor. In the three days they were there, they visited the governor's residence and offices, which had become an art museum and writer's guild, and found the grave of their sister Joan. On their return trip, they had the opportunity to view a bronze bust of their father that was made in 1919, which was held in the archives of the Monument of Liberation in the Czech Vojenské Museum in Prague. In October of 2010, Carpathia Rusin Day was celebrated in Pittsburgh. Among the attendees was Paul Warhola, Andy Warhol's brother, Connie Ash, and Ted Zatkovich. <laughs>